internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative, and I've got a, a new friend on the line, and actually I talked with him earlier when I was out walking around the lake, but he's back here now, and we're going to have him on Synergy Cafe, and his name is David. You there, David? Good morning. How are you? And is it Selly or Sealy? Selly, as in sell. Aha, sell. you got to sell, right? <laughs> So, sell is my name. Sell is the game. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> now, I know that I think you live in Hawaii, but you're in the States right now, right? Correct. That's correct. Well, why did you leave Hawaii to come to the States? Well, no, <laughs> I, I live in Hawaii permanently. Right. I came back to uh, see our first great grandchild. Oh, okay. And that was uh, three weeks ago. Beautiful little girl. And so we're heading back to Hawaii tomorrow. Okay. I thought maybe you got sick of palm trees or something and you wanted to. No, well, they got, they got no. palm trees in LA though. <laughs> it's, uh, there's nothing like being able to go out and pick a coconut or, uh, you know, a guava or <laughs> the beautiful fruit of Hawaii. And exactly. Of fantastic. Yes. I'm working on a project in Costa Rica where I'm looking forward to being able to just plant your own fruit and stuff. That's going to be good. Yeah, so it's fun. Tell us a little more about you. I know that you got some amazing things that you've done, but we talked about them around the lake, but let's talk about them now. Well, I'll give you my uh, elevator spit, uh, pitch, I guess. Perfect. Um, <laughs> I was born in England, grew up in England, went to school in England. And uh, when I finished high school, I decided that uh, I would run away, which is exactly what I did. Jumped on the ship in Liverpool, ended up in Montreal, and made my way to Vancouver. And at 16, I was an office boy for the phone company. By the time I was 19, I was a district manager with, uh, I think, eight offices and about 86 employees. And I was a first-class jerk. My people skills were zero, but I got the numbers, and so they kept promoting me. And at the end of the day, after I married one of the operators, that was 58 years ago, and uh, she got my number, so we ended up moving to the United States. And I was in the cosmetic industry and management, management positions, uh, traveling a lot, of course, and ended up after, well, let me see, it was about 55 when I got my head handed to me on a platter, not because of uh, performance, but politics. And I decided at that time I would be better off being my own boss instead of being under somebody else's control. So that's what, what, what age was that? Oh, God. I mean, I'm, I'm almost 80 now, so it's figured I have to remember. Uh, I have some comments on remembering, by the way. In a few minutes. Uh, probably about 55, I think. I think it was 55. Oh, wow. I, I learned early. I got I just decided <laughs> I didn't want to have a job. I, was, I worked for a few years for the county parks, and I got laid off, and I thought, where's my gold watch? How come that, that didn't work? So right into being a full-time magician and entrepreneur. <laughs> Well, entrepreneurship is really, that's where my head has always been, actually. I've always had something going on. I had a, my first business when I was 11 years old. I had a stamp business in England in school. And I always had pocket money, of course. So I found out that if you bought something for you know, 10 cents and sold it for 20, you made a profit. So exactly. that was my first trip into <laughs> entrepreneurialism. And it's never stopped. I've, I've owned and operated many, many businesses, uh, criminal colleges. I've owned a criminal college mail order business, wow. restaurants, pizza parlor, um, and uh, a few others that I probably should be embarrassed to mention, but uh, it's all right. Listen, wow. uh, the learning curve is what you make it and it's how you react to all the stuff that you learn in the process and how you implement what you've learned. That's what I've done. And so that, that's I'm exciting. Excited, actually more excited <laughs> now about things than I've ever been. Frankly, It's fun talking with you on that because we're on the same page as far as life path. It seems like I was the kid in school that would buy the bulk candy and sell it at, the, at a retail price to the kids. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So what is it you're doing now? You told me you said you're setting a record or something, right? Well, I have a Guinness World Record underway. The uh, It'll actually pull a trigger, actually, the real trigger. Uh, will be January 1st of next year. The oldest author to publish the most books in one year, and I've got two series of books. Uh, we have a relationship with Mark Victor Hansen, the chicken soup author, and oh, I've cool. done a few pay-to-play programs with him. Uh, learned a lot, of course, and he's only sold 400 million books, so he's a good guy to learn from. And, I love uh, the strategy. Kind of what I've done. The, the, the strategy behind that chicken soup thing, and that they could duplicate oh, it for the teenage soul, the I, golden soul, is very, very smart. It's a marvelous uh, strategy, and you know that didn't come about. Most people look at it and say, "Wow, it's just you no." Know, but success comes to those who are best prepared. And Mark uh, went through, I think, I think 
it was either 38 or 40 some odd publishers to find someone that would believe in his concept, uh, along with Jack Canfield, of course. And mm -hmm. um, they, you know, they were rejected, rejected, kind of like uh, Fred Smith with uh, FedEx. Uh, he believed enough in his stuff and uh, it's made a fantastic success of it. It was great. I love it. Well, I guess some people don't have that vision for something like that, but like that chicken soup thing, that was marvelous in that uh, the book was actually written by the people that were reading it. So it was sort of like a crowdsourced kind of uh, compounded thing. It was pretty cool. Well, he has a, what's now called, of course, disruptive marketing practice or you know, marketing concept. And that's what I'm doing, not, not so much with the publishing, the Guinness Record, which is uh, I'm doing two series of books. One is the Papa series, and the other one is Famous 50. I own a, about two or 300 domains, I think, on different things. And the, uh, the Famous 50 is a series of books. It's, I call it Vanity Publishing. And uh, for 50 bucks, you can get in the book uh, in whatever category, real estate agent, uh, you know, doctor, governor, or whoever, whatever category it is. There's about 37 categories. And they'll get in the book for 50 bucks. Uh, there'll be uh, 50 people in the book and first first edition and so on it's uh, kind of a fun project cool and it'll be the van it's vanity publishing is fun because you know the publishing business is crazy the, it, everything's uh, ch changed considerably it's the internet <laughs> has kind of yeah. flipped everything around the whole real estate business the publishing business um, right you can download an well, app and be a tax driver all the paradigms have changed and so you know the key i think in the door is to have something different that's disruptive and uh, the publishing part of what I'm doing is not really different. It's self-publishing, but the uh, the model is different than than most. And then the entrepreneur program that I'm doing is, is totally different. That 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 really is disruptive marketing. I think at its finest, and we have yet to see how that's going to work. Now that's I'm another thinking. project I think you've got going on, like teaching entrepreneurs to be entrepreneurs. Did you have something like I thought you mentioned something like that? Yeah, I launched a, a program called the International Entrepreneurs Association .org. It's uh, the hyperlink on that is IEA seven 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 dot com, and it's a licensed program. We're going to be appointing executive directors in each country uh, with a revenue sharing program to teach and train entrepreneurs, and with a charitable giving component attached to that. We're working with uh, a number of. As a matter of fact, I was just at the Reagan Library talking about hosting the event there for the, for the launch of that major thing next year. And so it's all planned out and it'll be tied right to my book signing tour with the uh, Famous 50 book series. So it's kind of fun. Well, you've got a lot of stuff going on, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of little elements. Of, I'd, rather, like I'd rather be busy than bored. And, you know, uh, as I said, it's... Um, uh, somebody said to me, well, you're going to retire. I said, no, I'll re never retire because when the brain retires, the body follows, and I'm not interested in that. The, right. That's why I say this is retirement. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to retire. I don't be I'd rather be looking down at the grass and up. <laughs> <laughs> All these good sayings come from knowledge. So I don't like to do these too long because uh, people have got this, this okay. uh, commodity of time, but I'd like to do more. It sounds like you've got a lot of things to choose from your buffet of entrepreneurialism. There you go. So is there anything sure. that you want to highlight right now and uh, let us know about that's like a current project that you got going on? Well, Mike, uh, there are several. I don't know if I can categorize them in terms <laughs> of importance per se. Uh, but I, I, I really, because I've been married 58 years, we are, we are passionate about relationships. And we've developed some, uh, you know, some interesting paperwork, I guess you call it, but they're actually little tests and very simple programs to help people with the relationship. Uh, the, the difficult part, frankly, Brad, is that a lot of people will simply not take the time to kind of sort out the things that are going on in the relationship. So we've developed a 10 question test, um, one through 10, you take it yourself, then you trade tests with your significant other and choose weapons if you're going to have a fight. <laughs> the uh, questions are self-graded one through 10, but they're very revealing because it reveals the differences between the people. And of course, boys and girls are obviously different. Mm -hmm. um, the ladies have to get off about 4,000 words a day. The guys can get by with about 1,200. And in, they're, in, they're in that little simple concept lies in lots of problems. So we've developed... Um, that technique of the, the test itself is just an exploratory thing to define the differences. The step number two and three, though, 
is where the action takes place and being able to resolve those differences through communication, meaningful communication. And we've got a couple of things that are in there. So I'm, I'm actually going to put up a site. It's called askdavidhow.com. And in that site will be uh, the test and there'll be a, it'll be free. They can take it. And then they can decide what they want to do about the relationship, move forward, and there'll be subscriptions and so on. Lots of interesting things for people to do uh, to improve the relationship. That, that, that one's kind of on, I would say, at the top of the list. So. That's, that's uh, cool in that uh, relationship isn't always just about marriage, but it could be a business relationship. If there's a man that's talking to a woman in business, you know how to communicate a little bit better, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, it's uh, all about communication. Well, we can get a hold of you in one hub spot, right? You got like a main website where you can find all your little, like a blog or something that you got. You got that domain well, you can I, share. I, <laughs> I think I'm getting too many websites. The This one is going to, that particular uh, effort, I've got my own professional speaking site, but that wouldn't apply here. Um, but the site that's going to be up will be askdavidhow.com. On that site will be a selection of topics that you can pick, whether it's the entrepreneurship, um, whether it's relationship, you know, what, whichever topic you, you're interested in that I have some expertise in and experience, um, you can't teach something you haven't done. And so therein lies the disruptive marketing thing we were talking about earlier. If you're going to market something, you've got to make sure that, you know, uh, that it, it appeals to the people on a broad scale and they can understand what's going on without incurring a $50,000 education bill. Right. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like we're very similar. I got a lot of domain names too, and then I just point them to one. So they're up there on GoDaddy, and I can point them to wherever yeah. I have to put them. And so, David, I appreciate you taking the time. If there's uh, any other th uh, the, these things from your buffet that you want to share down the road, let's reconnect and talk about them specifically. But other than that, yeah, I like to, to keep these kind of tight. And then uh, maybe we'll start a whole series. <laughs> well, that'd be great. I'd be happy to. And thank you for the opportunity to talk and chat with you and uh, wish all of your audience a great day. Take okay. Care. Thanks, David. Peace. Bye-bye.